We've all come across that frustrating moment when you're planing around and your plane clogs up. Sometimes I'll be planing along and the plane just suddenly stops cutting. It was cutting a moment ago and now it's all clogged up. And then you go and take it apart and what do you find inside but your chip breaker is loaded up and there's all this junk stuck right on the front here. Sometimes you'll even notice that the chips go between the chip breaker and the iron. When I first got into hand tools, I did a lot of hand tool restoration and I came across this problem all the time. It drove me bonkers. Every time I picked up a plane, it kept jamming. Problem is that the chip breaker isn't fit to the iron. And so we need to do a few modifications to make it work. Let me show you a few. So let's crack this thing open and see what's inside here. And this one, you can see there's a bunch of chips on the chip breaker here. Sometimes you won't find them inside, but you'll find them all loaded up and attached to the front of the chip breaker like these ones. There are two big problems with it. Number one, the chip breaker may actually have a bit of a ledge right here in the front. And if you find that you put your nail on it and it catches on there and doesn't slide past, then that's a jamming point for the chips to lodge in and they'll start piling up on this and they'll clog your mouth. The other item is that there's actually a gap between the two. If you put the chip breaker and iron together and you look through the bow of the chip breaker up at the light, you shouldn't see any light coming between the two. That should be a really nice tight gap. But every now and then you'll see, oh my, there's actually a spot of light on this side where the chips can go underneath the chip breaker and clog it up. So to fix this, we need to do two things. Number one, we need to address the edge of the chip breaker so there's no ledge. We don't want any spot that the chips coming out can actually catch on the chip breaker. We want the breaker to break them, not catch them. It's not a chip catcher. The second problem is we want an even connection between these two. So when they touch, they touch evenly all the way across and we get a nice tight fit between them. And you can't always move a chip breaker from one iron to another because every iron might have a slightly different variance to it or a slightly different amount of spring. So you always wanna make sure that your chip breaker fits your iron. What I'm looking for is I want a nice flat shiny spot all the way along the tip here on the bottom. And this one's pretty good, except for there's a bit of a dull spot here, and that lets me know this is the spot that's not connecting. So what I can do is bring it over here to my coarsest diamond stone, and I'm gonna set it on here flat, I'm gonna bring it over so the bow is on there, and I'm gonna lower it down just a little bit, because I just want the tip of this touching. Just lowering it down that little bit puts a slight angle on there. There isn't any pre precise angle, you just don't want it flat, you want it down just a little bit. And I'm gonna go three or four times back and forth. The nice thing about this is this is a very, very soft steel. Whereas this is hard, this is easy to grind and shape. And I wanna look on here and now, after a few strokes, I've got nice clean wear pattern, except for I need a little more there. So I'm just gonna spend just a couple minutes cleaning that up. And that's enough. That's all it needed was that few strokes. Then I'm gonna come over here to my finest diamond. I'm gonna give it just a quick polish up, nothing special, no stropping needed. I just need a nice clean edge there. So now I know I have a smooth surface all the way across that tip. Theoretically, if I bring this in there and touch those two should touch perfectly, there shouldn't be any light coming through. But every now and then you'll still see light and you'll usually see it at the outside of one side or the other. Now, if it's in the middle, that means that this isn't flat. And so you can go and profile this to try and match that flatness or you can take this out and flatten it. But most of the time you're gonna find that it's on one edge or the other and that's because the iron isn't sitting flat on it. It's actually kind of twisted one way or the other. With this chip breaker, it's not level. This should be level, it should be one solid point. If I bring this one in or set it down in here, there, there's no wobble to this. It's touching all the way along here and it's touching back here and there's no amount to it. There's a little bit of spring here in the middle. We want to be able to push that down a little bit, but we want it to be nice and solid. Most of the time, if there's a problem with it coming through, it's just that it's twisted. And in this case, you might be able to see it in the camera, this one is really twisted. So what I can do is take this, set it in my vise, and I'm just going to tap it a little bit and try and twist it back. I grab my mallet and I can see, I just need to twist it back this way. This one back this way a little bit. Bend the whole thing over. And because it's nice and soft, you can bend it back and forth and back and forth without a problem. Take it out, set it on the bench and see if it wobbles. If I put them together, I want them to be touching back here and touching up here. And I don't want anything in the middle here touching. I want a little bit of spring in there. So when I put the screw in, it actually tightens this down. That little bit of force on there helps close this up and give you a nice tight seal. And so after doing the adjustment and hammering this around, we can set it on here and see when we squeeze it down, do we actually see any light coming through there? If we still see a little bit, you can see which side it's on and that's the side you need to twist. So if I see light on this side, I need to tap that side down in the vise and bend it over a little bit more. And I'll go back and forth until I get a nice clean fit between them. So now I know that this has a good fit. 
I don't see any light coming through there. It's nice and flat. I've got a little bit of spring in there and I'm just touching along the tip and I'm just touching back here. We have a good fit there. But if I slide my finger on here, there's, there's still an edge that's catching on that. And I wanna get rid of that edge because sometimes that's all that the problem is. If you don't have any light coming through there, then all you need to do is this next step. So looking at the profile of this iron, we have the flat spot here we just created, but sometimes there's just a little nose right here that the chips will come in and catch on that. So if we have the iron flat here, we don't want a little ledge here. We want it to be nice and smooth here with a clean transition. So when the chips hit it, they come out. Now we don't have to make this into a sharp point like an iron. It just has to have less of a ledge here than the thickness of the shaving you're doing. So if you really wanna be a perfectionist, you can put this up in your honing guide and bring it over here and sharpen it at something like 45 degrees. Generally, I put it on here and I roll it until just the tip is touching. I put a little weight on both sides and it doesn't take much at all. It just takes a couple passes because this is really, really soft steel. And now I've got, uh, I can just have a little bit more in this corner. So just that, and there. Now I've got a good shiny spot running all the way across. It's actually somewhat sharp, not sharp enough you could cut yourself, but it's sharp enough. We'll put that on here, put them together and see when I squeeze these together, can my finger slide, oh, that's nice. There is no edge on that. My finger has no resistance at all to that edge. If I put a piece of paper on here, you can see now it just, slides right past. There's nothing catching that at all. And this is one of the big tells. If your paper hits it and stops, that means you've got a bit of an edge there. Or if your paper hits it and goes underneath, that's where you need to do some work. We want it to have a really nice fit all the way across and the paper slides right past. Now, the finer the settings on your plane, the bigger the problem you're gonna have. If you have a really tight mouth and a really close chip breaker, then this has to be a really, really good fit. And the tighter and the finer the shavings you want, the better your fit has to be in the chip breaker. Now, if you're using it for big shavings and you're just hogging off material, or even on a homemade scrub plane, you don't have to worry about the fitment that much because the chips are so much thicker, they'll ride over just about anything. But if you're going to make really thin shavings, then you want it to be a really nice fit. And so in this case, I'm gonna actually slide it right up close to the edge, probably about a 32nd inch away. Tighten it down, let's take it for a test drive. So now, with this thing about as low as it'll go, taking these really, really thin, fluffy shavings on here, it's not jamming, and I'm getting this beautiful stuff. And even if I crank it up a little bit and take a heavy shaving, still not getting any jamming. Getting nice full width shavings all the way across the board that are really, really happy without any clogging of the wood. For a lot of people, when the plane first clogs up, the thing they think about is, oh no, my mouth isn't big enough. And as long as the mouth is at least the thickness of your shaving or a little larger, it's probably not gonna clog up due to the mouth. It might, if it's too tight farther up, then that might be an issue. But most of the time, probably about 95% of the time or even more, it's a problem with the chip breaker. It just needs to be backed up a little bit or honed a little bit or has a better fitment to it. And as long as you actually make a good fit between your chip breaker and your iron, that solves almost all of the clogging issues. It's one of those things that once I found, I went through my shop and I fixed all of my chip breakers and now <laughs> they all work. Uh, to the point that when I actually had to make this video because I had several questions coming through, uh, I had to try and find a chip breaker that wouldn't work. And even the old rusty ones, I had to bend this out of shape to make it function. This one, I had to dull the tip to make it actually clog because they, they all work. It's a really quick fix. And once it's fixed and it's made into that, it's fixed for life. It's not something you have to dress anymore. And it's kind of a, a cool opportunity. But if you take that chip breaker out and put it on a different iron, you might find you have a problem there. It's not always one size fits all irons because every iron is slightly different. So I hope you like this quick video. I did an older video on this a while ago, but I had several people asking me if I could update it. So I'll leave a link to that one down below if you wanna see that. I talk about it slightly different on there. So if this isn't quite making sense, you might wanna check out that one. And I'll leave a link to that down below. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, things that I did wrong or things I could do better, let me know that down below. I do love reading through those. I learn a lot from that. It means more than I can say as well as it helps out the channel. Anytime you like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things things you know about that really helps us out. Thank you. Please, please, please do that. But if you want to go even better and want to be amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, and one of those people who walk the red carpet, uh, the red carpet over here, uh, think about becoming a patron on Patreon. All those people are some of the patrons on Patreon. Between patrons and members and people who click the thank you button, uh, you guys keep us going. So thank you. We are completely sponsored by you. If you'd like to find out more about that, you know what to do. Links down below. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day.
No, no, no. And if you find out you're still having problems with clogs, then Melody, go get my plunger!